asleep. He'd be court-martialed if he was in the cavalry. Shouldn't be any trouble, General. Couldn't be more than half a dozen of them. It's just a hunting party that sneaked off the reservation. I suppose we ought to forget we seen them. I'd like to job with my orders out to drive them back to the reservation. Sergeant, put the men out so they're surrounding the camp. Pass the word there'll be no shooting. Sergeant, I mean no shooting. First man who fires a shot will answer to me. My orders are to drive them back to the reservation, not to kill them. It's an Indian that you're not trying to kill him. Especially when he won't give you a chance to talk. General! Over here! This here's the Indian called Black Eagle. He's the younger brother of Chief Tall Knife. Get me some water. Something to pack this wound. I've got to stop the bleeding. Sergeant. He's dead. One of them braves got away. He gets back to the camp and tells Tall Knife that one of your men killed his brother. Tall Knife's gonna start the biggest dad blaming in what you ever did see. Dismiss the rest of the men. Yes, sir. All right, you heard him. You all just volunteered for burial detail. Dismount and lead off. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Melinda. <laughs> Now, being stuck with a sister around here isn't nearly half as bad as I expected it to be. I'm not so sure that I consider that a compliment. Huh? <laughs> well, it was meant to be. As a matter of fact, I find myself envying your husband. And a fine family. Three nice boys and a wife who can cook the way you can. Thank you. Tell the truth, it's been a real pleasure having you out here for a visit. Even during these troubled times. Only you hadn't brought that blasted female dragon with you. Temper, temper, Alfred. Besides, you're the one who insisted that I mustn't travel alone. Yes, but why bring that female horse Greeley with you? You know what she had the nerve to say to me at breakfast this morning? No. This is the red man's land, implying that we didn't have any right to be here at all. Alfred, you are being so unkind to Anna. Besides, you didn't know her during the war. She was so young, so beautiful. And so much in love. But uh, Anna Coldstone Peverly? 
Yes. And John Peverly, he was a young firebrand, always backing the downtrodden, fighting for social reform. He's the one that founded the magazine, Bold Venture, as part of that fight. And then when he was killed during the war, Anna was determined to carry on for him. Oh, just the same. A blasted female goes too far. Now, the next thing you know, she'll be advocating smoking and wearing men's pants, as well as voting. And what would be so wrong with that? But I'll tell you what would be so wrong with that. The thing that... Come in. Okay. Running in from patrol, sir. At ease, Colonel. I heard about Tall Knife's brother. Couldn't have happened at a worse time. I took every possible precaution, sir. But I know that. It wasn't your fault. You were merely carrying out orders. But it was my responsibility, sir. There was absolutely no point in bothering that hunting party at all, sir. There's no sense to this policy of driving the Indians here and driving them there. We don't make policy, Colonel. We merely carry it out. And the people who make the policy should be out here to see what's going on. Some fool in Washington sits behind a desk and issues a senseless order, not realizing how many men are going to die trying to carry it out. Well, it is an order, Colonel. It is an order. That's right, sir. It's an order. But if I hadn't followed orders last night, seven men would be alive today. Seven. And a harmless hunting party of Cheyenne would have eventually wandered back to their reservation. Out here on the frontier, an officer has the right to question idiotic orders. All right, now that's enough. Your flair for individual effort has already cost you your general star and your regiment. I'm going to overlook your statement because I can see that you're upset. But when you're given an order, you will follow out that order. Our charges are going to be preferred against you. You know that, don't you? Yes, sir. General Terry, is it true that there was an unprovoked attack against a Cheyenne hunting party by soldiers of your command? We'll continue this discussion later, Colonel. Exactly the attitude I expected you to take, General Terry. I am out of Coldstone Peverly, Colonel Custer, General Terry's house guest. You were on patrol when we arrived, but I have been looking forward to meeting you. My, uh, uh, privilege to meet you, Miss Peverly. It is Miss Peverly. It's Mrs. Peverly, Colonel Custer. My husband was killed during the Civil War. You have my sympathy, ma'am. I didn't expect you to be so socially conventional, Colonel Custer. To express banalities you have no reason to mean. Mrs. Peverly is a social reformer and a militant suffragette. Militant. And thoroughly disapproved of by General Terry. You see, I'm the publisher and editor of Bold Venture. Perhaps you've heard of the magazine. I'm free to have, Mrs. Peverly. You've published a number of articles about me. None of them flattering. That is quite correct. But then again, you don't approve of most of the actions of Congress or the President either. An office I understand you hold some ambition for. If so, can I count on your vote, Mrs. Beverly? Aren't you being a little bit premature, Colonel? Man has to be over 35 years of age to hold the presidency in this country. Uh, now, uh, Mrs. Beverly, if you'll excuse us, uh, this is a military matter. And to be surrounded by the customary secrecy and misinformation usually provided by the Department of War. May I remind you, Mrs. Beverly, that you are a guest in my house? That does not change the fact that my duty requires me to investigate all matters concerning the public welfare. Despite your convictions of equality between the sexes, you still take advantage of being a woman, don't you, Mrs. Beverly? wearing female just the same I think you ought to know that she's got enough influence to affect your entire military career in what way in any way she pleases in spite of the fact that she continually criticizes government policy in her magazine she's still President Grant's favorite niece Grant's niece yeah President Grant and his brother Orville aren't exactly my most ardent admirers well, that's precisely why I warned you. Hey. Come in! It's Tall Knife, sir. What about Tall Knife? Please come here, sir. 
He says he's come for the body of his brother. And he's wanting to talk to Colonel Custer. I'd better talk to him. You stay here, Colonel. I'm sorry, sir. But I think Tallknife has a right to see me. I owe it to the man. You owe him nothing. I was responsible for his brother's death. I'd like to explain how it happened. All right. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. I agree with you for the death of your brother. I didn't order it. It was mistaken in the darkness before I had... Black time. Eagle was little more than a boy. He was like a son to me. Did he attack any of your men? No. My orders were to move the Cheyenne... Did back. he commit any crimes against the laws of the white man? There were no crimes committed, Tall Knife. Black Eagle and his hunting party wanted off the reservation. For this... For this he was killed? No, not for that. It was dark. My men moved in to surprise your people so there'd be no shooting. One of my men stumbled. Without warning, a fight broke out. Then one of your men killed my brother. For no reason. For no reason. You. We've been friends too long. Yellow hair is a coward. Men should fight with honor and for honor. Black Eagle's dead. It was a mistake, and I'm sorry for it. Please! Yellow hair refuses to fight as a warrior fights. But this will not end what is between us. We shall hunt. One more dime, yellow hair. Death hunt of the Cheyenne. You and your men attacked a small Cheyenne hunting party and murdered all but one of them. Isn't that true? From your point of view, it is. What other point is there? For more than a hundred years, the Plains tribes have fought the growth of this country. Now they stand in the direct path of uniting the two halves of our nation. In any war, mistakes are made. War? Our trampling upon the rights of the Indian tribes by our might? I am very familiar with your career here on the frontier, as well as with the infamous record of the 7th Cavalry Regiment. Cite your record, Mrs. Beverly. Gladly, Colonel Custer. The massacre of the Cheyenne at the Washita River. You attacked before dawn two years ago. And that tribe of the Cheyenne Nation was almost destroyed by your ruthless slaughter. The punitive raid against Black Kettle and his Cheyenne was ordered by General Philip H. Sheridan. This is a copy of his official report. Between the months of August and November, 1868, the settlers of Kansas and Colorado sustained the following losses. Murdered, 117. Wounded, 16. Scalped and mutilated, 32. Women outraged, 14. Women captured and never seen again, 4. Horses and mules stolen, 619. Stock cattle stolen, 958. 
It is these acts of incredible rapine and murder that forced the attack on Black Kettle and his Cheyenne. The newspapers said that there were only women and children at the Cheyenne village, and yet you attacked. 7th Cavalry sustained 37 losses. I counted 103 dead Cheyenne braves. I killed Black Kettle myself. You are as convincing as I've been told you are, Colonel Custer. But how do you justify your attack on Tall Knife's brother and his hunting party? For your information, Mrs. Beverly, I don't. Do you intend to drop the matter and let it be forgotten as the incident on the Washita was forgotten? I intend to take whatever action I consider necessary. And so do I. I intend to publicize what has happened. And I promise you that pressure will be brought upon the Secretary of War to institute a formal investigation. without the truth. I've got to convince him that I spoke the truth about his brother. You know what he meant by that invitation to a death hunt, don't you? I know. Oh, you're sure picking a hard way for you and me to commit suicide. Why, he'll have our scalps a dangling from a teepee pole for dark. Just see that my horse is saddled and ready. You don't have to come along, California. I can find Tall Nice Village alone. And I've always said that the Cheyenne was a whole lot meaner than the Sioux are. I reckon now's just as good a time as any to put it to the test. In the name of scientific research, them fellers at that new Smithsonian institution is sure going to be awful thankful to you and me. I'll go get the fuel and the horse. should have sighted Tall Knife's lodges by now. The last time I was up this way, he's camped off yonder in that valley. Why would Tall Knife move his people away from good water and his horses from good grazing? Well, the only reason I can think of is to hide these women and children so him and his braves can hit the war train. We've got to find him. Sure does beat all how fast a whole Cheyenne village can disappear in the thin air. Look. There's cabin over yonder. people didn't even own a gun didn't believe in them Benefit. Tall knife, and he's after a bigger game than us. He's going to attack Ford Hayes. That's right. Defender attack! Close the gates! Man the walls! They're burning up the countryside! They're killing them just running over the crops, man! It's something fierce! They ain't a half a mile behind us, and they're moving fast! Hey, move it! Get out! Yards. 
They won't attack yet. Well, you bet they won't put it off for long, General. You're right, California. Sergeant, give me a fresh horse. Yes, sir. You stay right there, Sergeant. You remain inside this fort, Colonel. This has to be settled with Tall Knife now, sir. He'd like nothing better than to suck you into a trap. I can take care of myself, General Terry. That's a risk that I refuse to take. You'll countermand your order to the sergeant immediately. Yes, sir. I hate to say it, but General Terry's right, you know. California, when are you going to learn to keep that big mouth of yours shut? I got to admit, Sergeant, I'm just about as good at sticking my foot in my big mouth as the next man. Taking this fort could be a job, but there just might be enough of them to do it, Captain. I am thinking the same thing, Miss L. James B. Open the gate. I'll do the talking, Custer. Why are you here, Tall Knife? You've signed a treaty that there are to be no more wars between us. I want yellow hair. You talk like a fool. What about our treaties? Did the treaty stop yellow hair from killing my warriors? You were told that was a mistake. Give me yellow hair, or I leave this place in ashes. At sunrise, we fight. Colonel, you'll see to it that the men are prepared to defend this fort at dawn. In the matter. General Terry, I resent being sent packing this way. I'm a representative of the American president. You're my duty also to... a woman, and it's my duty to see that you're safely conveyed out of danger. You don't seem to realize, Mrs. Beverly, that this fort is under the threat of an immediate attack by an overwhelming force of Cheyenne warriors. And you don't seem to realize... The things are in the Surrey, ma'am. Now, if you'll get aboard, please. Thank you, Colonel Custer. I'm only sorry the time was so short. I was counting on having you to dinner. I'm looking forward to another time very soon. Things will quiet down. They always do. I hope so. Do be careful. I will, thank you. Come on, Belinda. And you be careful too, Alfred. Don't always be letting yourself go. It's a disgrace how little care you men take. I know. I know. You've got to be miles away from here before dawn. I will look forward to our next meeting, Colonel Custer. I can hardly wait myself. I do not need your help. Mount the detail, Sergeant. Detail, mount up! You can make Cedar Springs before daybreak. Should be safe to camp there for the rest of the night, and then move on to Fort Riley. Yes, sir. The gates are open, Sergeant. Move them out. Yes, sir. saying that that's a load off my mind. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Oh. Sorry about the bumps, ladies. This here is Cedar Springs. And we made it without losing our hair. <laughs> Begging your pardon, ma'am. All right, we'll make camp here. McGee, you take first watch. Keep a good look out at our back. We don't want any unwanted guests. We'll be here about three hours. We'll leave right after sunup. Here's some blankets. Thank you, Sergeant Buston. My pleasure, ma'am. I'll get some water. Thank 
anything about Colonel Custer. I detest the man and everything he stands for. You don't mean that. Tell me, Anna. Have you ever thought about remarrying? I haven't even the time to think about it. Then take time before it's too late. You shut out everything that makes life worth living for a woman. A home, a man, children. I have my work. Nothing else matters. Not now, perhaps. But the years have a strange way of passing you by. And regrets aren't much consolation as you grow older. Number one, trooper coming in on foot. What happened? They hit us at night, sir. Hard. We didn't have a chance. Did they kill the women? They're as good as dead, sir. The Cheyenne loaded them into the Surrey and drove off with them. I played dead. It's all I could do. Better get over to the hospital and have the surgeon take a look at that wound. Sir, about the women. We'll get them back, Sergeant. Colonel, I'll be ready to ride any time you say. Get him over to the hospital. Corporal of the Guard! Post number one, engine coming in. doesn't return to his camp. It's the last we'll ever see of those two women they've captured. Is Tall Knife a squaw that he makes war on women? Tall Knife does not want the women. You, you come alone and they go free. You stay here and they die. Saddle up? No, we don't. Not one man leaves this fort. And that's an order.
request the general's permission to be excused from duty, sir. If anything happens to those women... What's that? What'd you say? There's a personal matter I have to attend to, sir. Between you and Tall Knife, I suppose? Yes, sir. I can't permit any foolhardy acts of gallant. General Terry, you heard that Indian. If I don't go, Tall Knife will kill those two women. But even if I allowed you to go, what guarantee would we have that Tall Knife would free them? No. I can allow you to make no move until I order it. Is that clear? I made a mistake in coming here. But, sir, I fought with your own sister in Tall Knife's hands. That's enough, Custer. General Terry, do you realize that... That's I all. You'll confine yourself to quarters until further notice. Now get out of here. that you might have a little trouble sneaking out a horse, sir. So there's one saddle and waiting just 50 yards from the main gate. What makes you think I need a horse? You know I'm confined to quarters. Never figured you'd let a little detail like that stand in your road. And there's a ladder leading against the north wall so you don't have to use the gate. The sentries might not understand and start yelling for the corporal of the guard. <laughs> When I get back, Sergeant, I'm going to have you court-martialed for helping an officer break his confinement to quarters. Yes, sir. Keep your word and release the women. Well, we will hunt together, Yellow Hair. Death hunt. You will take the women with you. If you live, they live. And you lied. Your word has no honor. Speak softly, Yellow Hair. <laughs> You and the women will die now. We'll hunt your hunt, Tall Knife. And make it one you'll never forget. At sunrise tomorrow, you will be set free to run. Put him with the women. You came here alone and unarmed? Why didn't you bring the regiment? You'd be dead right now if I brought them. You better get what sleep you can. You're gonna need all your strength in a few hours. great hunters of the plains. Their whole history is based on the hunt. They hunt for food, and they hunt for sport. 
Sometimes when a captive's taken, they often let him go. To get away if he can. You mean they hunt down a man as they would an animal? That's correct. I refuse to run to be chased. Well, that's your decision to make. But I think you'll run if you have any idea what the Cheyenne do to their female captives. I don't want to hear any more. We'll both go with you, Colonel. Take that with you. When the sun is there, I will come after you. Go. Let's go. Slope, hurry. spot any rippling in the water.
they've got our scalps. We've got to keep moving. I told you to keep going. Not without you. What are you going to do? Try to even the odds a little if I can. Now keep moving. Up here. They can't ride up on these rocks. The hunt will end yellow here. Black Eagle was killed by accident, Tall Knife. There's no reason for us to fight. Stop now, before it's too late. No. was before. There will be peace between us. There will be peace between us. You can rest over here. It's a long and eventful walk back to Fort Hayes. Sir. You want Custer? I didn't send for you. I did, General Terry. You did? May I ask why you feel privileged to summon one of my officers to your beck and call? Or you may be General Grant's niece, but by the great horn toad, don't you think... Yes, what is it, Melinda? 
Um, may I see you for just a minute, please? Yes, of course you can see me. I'm standing right here in front of you. Why? Alone. Alone? Now, why should you want to see me? General Terry. Huh. Yeah. Good. Well, I don't know what that was. Oh. May I say, Mrs. Beverly, that you look lovely. Thank you. This is Melinda's dress. It's been so long since I... The reason I wanted to see you, Colonel Custer, is that I feel I owe you an apology. My opinion of you is... It's an opinion shared by many people. I was wrong about you, too. In what way? Despite all you went through, you showed no sign of weakness, and I admire that in anyone, male or female. Thank you. But my apology still stands. For the first time, I think I understand you a little. But I'd like to know more. What you think and what you are inside. I'm a soldier, Mrs. Beverly. No more, no less. What I do think is that this country must have a chance to grow and become great. To do that, a price must be paid. But is it worth such a terrible price? It is to me. Secretary of War that we would have full protection of the military for the railroad survey crews. Now, I assume that to mean that we'd have at least a full company of men, not just two. My orders were to negotiate, not to fight, Mr. Glickston. Your survey crew was ordered to stay out of Fredonia until we got here. Where are they? I've got a schedule to keep, Colonel. You sent them into Fredonia? That's right. They're just a bunch of ex-rebels setting themselves up in what they call a new country. I've got every legal right to be in there, Colonel. They're blocking progress. They have rights too, Mr. Glickston. And I intend to protect theirs just as well as yours. Well, there's a survey crew. Well, I bring it up a little. Quite a ways back to the fort, but if they keep moving, they'll make it. Turn them loose! All right, take off. The fort is to the south. Well, I heard you were around here, but I never expected to run into you. General George Armstrong Custer, the scourge of Gettysburg. You have the advantage, sir. Indeed I do, and I intend to keep it. My name is Ebediah Jackson, former captain of the Virginia Regulars. Elected leader of the settlement, Fredonia. What are you going to do with us? Who are you? My name is Glickston. I represent the railroad. We have legal right of way through this area, and we're protected by a special act of the United States Congress. I suggest you keep that in mind. Well, I'm afraid the special act of the United States Congress won't do you any good out here. You see, you're no longer in the United States. So consider yourself my prisoner. And we have a little riding to do, and I won't warn you again. You'll only stay alive as long as I allow you to. Now, mount up. See, Colonel, we even have our own army. 
Every man in this valley drills a part of each day, while the others work in the field or help build the town. It'll take more than a homegrown militia to stand up against the government, Jack. We've got enough. Take the sergeant and the civilian and lock them up in the granary. Hey, now, wait a minute. You can't do that. Afraid they can, Mr. Clixton. Come on. Do you remember me, Colonel? No. Ain't likely you would. All that smoke and dirt, cannons firing, you riding down on us with your cavalry. You cut my boys to pieces. You ground them in the dirt. Where was that? Appomattox. There were losses on both sides, mister. That war is all over now. No, sir, Colonel. It ain't over yet. You're still living and breathing. But not for long. Got you. There's no room for private vengeance in this valley, and that goes for all of us. If they want to fight, they'll have to bring it to us. Now dismiss your men. Yes, sir. Company attention. Dismiss. A settlement of ex-Confederates trying to secede from the Union again. You're deceiving yourself if you think you can fight the army, Mr. Jackson. That's our armory. We drug cannon all the way out here. And we've got plenty of rifles and ammunition. Maybe we can't win, but we can fight. We lost everything back home, but we're not going to give up out here. Come with me. <laughs> to meet Colonel George Armstrong Custer. Colonel, my wife. I'll be at Mrs. Miller's house. Well, you can't very well blame her, Colonel. See, your federal troops burned down her house and killed her father. So blue isn't one of her favorite colors. The war was over a long time ago. No, Colonel. The shooting stopped. But it didn't change the things we believed in. Only a fool lives in the past. <laughs> to the victor belongs the spoils. Well, it makes it easier if you're on a winning side. The future's bright. Your future, not mine. You're wrong, Mr. Jackson. This country belongs to all of us, northerner and southerner. You know, there was a time when I could have agreed with you on that, Colonel. I was in a Yankee prison camp when the war ended. It was almost a year later before they turned me loose. And then they let me make my way back home the best way I could. <laughs> There's a word for you. Oh, you know what I had left? Nothing. Sit down, Colonel. I had a plantation that had been in my family for five generations. When I finally got back home, I found that a Yankee carpetbagger owned it. There are always men who fatten themselves on the miseries of others. Colonel, my uh, family were church people. And all the time we owned that land, we never once had a slave. But we made a mistake. We're on the losing side. So we lost everything. But we're going to start all over again out here, where a man can teach his sons to believe in the things he believes in. Tell me something, Mr. Jackson. What makes you think the Crow are going to let you stay here? We get along with them. Better than your blue boys do. They like us here. We trade them hard goods in exchange for meat. So if you're going to use that as an excuse to protect us, forget it. You're not being offered a choice. The railroad has the government's permission to build through here, and the army backs up the government's decisions. You of all people should know that by now. Custer, you take a good hard look at that map. But your life may depend on it. Come on. Our boundaries are clearly marked. If you or your men or the railroad step across that line, I'll have you shot. Well, you better muster your men, Mr. Jackson. But you make it clear to them what they're fighting for. Stubbornness, pure and simple. Stubborn? When the railroad comes through here, they'll take part of your land, sure. But 10 years from now, the land you have left will be worth 100 times as much. I'll show you and your sergeant, Mr. Glickson, to the boundary. 
If you come back again, be ready to fight, Custer. That's your choice, Mr. Jackson. Trouble, Mr. Jackson. Indians? Oh, I don't think it's very likely they'll attack. We'll take no chances. All right, dismount and take cover over here. <laughs> Attack? No, they're just boys. They're testing their courage. They'll charge one at a time. The boy who places his lance closest to the enemy has the most courage. You won't need that. Hold your fire, boys. You've done enough killing for one day, Cars. You put that knife away. Put it away. Oh, Colonel! He's dead. What happens to your treaty with the Crow now? I'll talk to him. Explain what happened. You think they'll listen to you after this? You're gonna need some help, Mr. Jackson. You'd take any excuse to bring your troopers in here, wouldn't you? You can't bluff me, Custer. You may find yourself in one of the bloodiest Indian wars this country's ever seen. Mount up! Mount up, boys. Thank you. So that's the way you're gonna play it, Mr. Jackson. The devil himself couldn't drive us out of here. All right, you're free to go. But don't come back again, because if you do, you won't ride out. And that's a promise, Colonel. Let's go. Jackson's entering an official complaint against me. For what? Well, he's drawing up a bill of particulars now. He claims that you didn't protect him. That you allowed yourself to be disarmed and captured without uh, having fought. I see. Are you going to endorse his complaint? No. But he'll send it anyway. He does have a friend in Washington. 
I know he galls you, Custer, but why can't you work with him? He's a pompous, arrogant complainer who happens to have the law on his side. It may seem like an injustice to you that the railroad has a right of way through an improved valley, but officially that's none of our business. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. Fine. I don't want any chance of a misunderstanding. As of sunrise tomorrow, Glickston's taking that survey party back up to the settlement of Fredonia. You're to select a patrol of ten men from the 7th and accompany him. What's this patrol supposed to do, sir? Fight the whole settlement? Because they're not going to let us set one foot in their valley without a battle. No, no, there'll be no fighting. We're faced with a touchy political situation here. I don't want it to appear as if my men are being used to start the Civil War all over again. I see. I'm to protect Glickston and his men, but I'm not allowed to fight to do it. That's about like sending me out unarmed to make a treaty with a grizzly bear. <laughs> That's about it. You're to cooperate with Glickston all the way. Is that why you're sending me so Glickston will drop his complaint? No. I'm sending you because I happen to think that you're the only man in this command who can bring it off. Good luck, Colonel. Sergeant Buster. Yes, sir. Call for ten volunteers to ride escort for that survey crew tomorrow. We're going back to Fredonia, sir? Yes, you will be rations for six days, field gear, and a hundred rounds per man. What's the matter? Did you see anyone out there you knew back in the old days? No, sir. But some of the men came from the county next to my home. It just doesn't seem right somehow. After all the work they put into that land. I can always leave you behind if that's what you're asking. No, sir. I'm not asking that. I just think it, there must be a better way to, to work things out. If there is, we'll find it. You have your orders, Sergeant. Are you? We'll take you as far as the railhead in the morning. Then you can go back to Virginia. I'll think about that. You'll think about it. I'm not giving you a choice. You think I'm going to have this settlement burned down because I'm a hothead, couldn't follow orders? Maybe we need a leader who knows what side he's on. Are you questioning my loyalty? You had Custer here and you turned him loose. We should have killed him. Showed him we need business. That's the only way we're going to keep them blue bellies out of here. If there's any killing to be done, they'll have to push it. The blood will be on their hands and not mine. Sam. Yes. There are Indians out there. How many? Three in the front, two in the back. I don't, I don't know. Go back inside. There's no war pink. They came here to talk. It's Brave Dog. It was his son you killed this afternoon. Put that thing away. They came here to fight. They never would have let Annie see them. Brave dog. Come on in, we'll talk inside. Uh, sit down, Chief. If you're hungry, my wife will fix you something. Is this the man who shot my son? He came charging down the hill, yelling and screaming. We're not familiar with all of your customs, Chief. Uh, this man thought your son was attacking us, so he shot him. Now, we've been at peace for a long time. And we wouldn't do anything to break that peace on purpose. I had... I had but one son. Oh, we're willing to make reparations. You, uh, you tell us what to do, we'll do it. How many beads was my son worth? How many blankets? No. A man for a man. He killed my son, and you give him to us. Oh, no, no. I'm not gonna be turned over to any... Shut up! 
You've asked for the one thing we can't give you. You've seen enough of us to know our customs. You have one day to think about it. With the next son, we will come for him. If he is given to us, we will go in peace. If he is not, then we will take him. And that is the word of the chief of the Crow Nation. Maybe you're right. I'll hightail it out of here first thing in the morning. You wouldn't have a chance. They have you hanging by your heels before noon. They're waiting out there. You can't hand me over to him. I won't. Now you go home. We'll talk tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, quite sure. Get everything you want here, huh? Yes, yes, thank you. I want you to know that I'm going to put in a good word for you when I write my next report to Washington. Thank you. Good night. Good night, General. You mean better get some sleep. You're going to need it. You'll be leaving at dawn. Ah, uh, Mr. Quickston. May I talk to you? Certainly, you're right ahead. It's about those people in Fredonia. Oh, what about them? Well, I know this country like the back of my hand. And you don't have to carry that railroad through Fredonia. There's a pass just 30 miles south, flat as a tabletop. Good I'm water, too. Sanger, listen to me, will you? I take my pay in the land. Now, uh, let's just say I was to route the railroad to the south. What do you think I'd get for my trouble? Oh, a handful of dust, maybe. But now, if I go through... Well, you don't know those people like I do. They lost everything in the war. Not just their crops or their homes, but everything. Well, that's their tough luck, Sergeant. I? I do everything nice and legal. All according to the law, Sergeant. Then you don't care what happens to those people. Oh, man, come on. Why concern yourself with them? Well, you saw the light. You turned in your gray coat for a blue one. Now, I go on feeling sorry for a bunch of redneck crackers who are sitting on land that doesn't belong to them. All right, will you listen to me, carpetbagger? Those are human beings out there. And they hurt just like anybody else. And if you push them too far, they're gonna fight. And I'm telling you now, and no matter what happens, you ain't gonna win. I wouldn't dirty my hands on you. Turncoat's gonna push me around. Attention. Now, would anyone mind telling me what's going on here? That man attacked me without provocation. I want him locked up, and I want to see him punished. What do you got to say for yourself, Sergeant? Nothing. Nothing that'll make any difference. Take him to the guardhouse. Colonel 
concussed. I'm going to hold you responsible for that man's punishment. <laughs> How many does that make? Nine, sir. Add one more. Only one, sir? Sergeant, ex-Sergeant Buster's a big man, sir. He's still not a horse, Mr. Hagan. Fool me. You will save your comments, Mr. Hagan. Yes, sir. Colonel. I'd like to ask you a question. You've got to let me go on that detail in the morning, sir. I don't think you'd be too anxious to climb in the saddle after marching with this load. Don't worry, sir. I'll be ready. Tell me something, Sergeant. Did Glickston provoke that fight? Well, sir, uh, that carpetbagger got to crone about how he was going to take that land from the settlers, and, well, things just got out of hand. All right, you can come along. But you stay away from Glickston. Because if things get out of hand again, you'll be taking your mail and your meals in the guardhouse. Yes, sir. The punishment will be six hours marching with that load. Keep him moving. All right, Hagen. Let's go. <laughs> Acting sergeant of this column. Me, sir? Yes, sir. We'll keep the men in a tight, close formation. Prepare to move out. Yes, sir. Don't look so stupid, Hagen. The command is column by twos, forward ho. I know the proper command. I've worn three stripes before <laughs> and lost them just as quick. Column by twos? Forward ho! Oh, Colonel. I want to camp here at Iron Springs tonight and survey the right of way north of there. There's a draw on the far side of the Fredonia Valley. What's it like? I, I don't know, sir. There's nothing but loose sand up there, Colonel. Not enough cover to hide a snake. Couldn't get a wagon through there if you tried. Now, if I was to do I it... I was speaking I... to the sergeant, Corporal. Yes, sir. You'd better approach it from the front. Company, Colonel. We have come to talk. Tell the men to stand easy, Sergeant. I don't want any incidents. Yes, sir. Eddie. I'm always happy to speak with Brave Dog, Chief of the Crow Nation. Mm. I will speak plainly. You take your blue soldiers to the north. To the settlement of Fredonia. Mm. You were there. You saw the death of my son. I saw it. I would have stopped it if I could have. Mm. I believe you. You take your soldiers there, for them to help fight the Crow people? We have no fight with you. Then I ask you, rest your horses here for a day. The grass is good here. Uh, hold on there. You, you trying to tell us to stay away from Fredonia? The Crow do not tell the Blue Soldiers what to do. But the grass is high here. It is better that you stay. Tell me.
That Indian's gonna raise old Ned with Fredonia, unless he gets the man who killed his son. And that's for sure, Colonel. But he doesn't want the army involved, or he wouldn't have come here. Colonel, it appears to me that uh, you haven't got any problem at all. I mean, this isn't your fight. Now, if you were to do as the chief suggests and stay here for a day, you wouldn't have no problem at all. Sergeant Hagen. Yes, sir. Prepare the men. Make a forced march to the north. I intend to make camp on the border of Fredonia by dawn. You're not going on. You have a question, Sergeant? No, sir. All right, men. Donna, Rio, get that wagon out of here. Boys, Jensen, let's get this wagon going. I'm begging the Colonel's pardon, but you're getting yourself into the middle of a hornet's nest. That's what we're here for. Now settle up, Corporal. Yes, sir. before dawn. We bivouac here. Pick up the horses and have the men ready to move out on foot. Yes, sir. Colonel, men are ready to move out. The settlement's starting to wake up. We haven't much time. Mm. Corporal Buster. Yo! I want you in on this. Yes, sir. The settlement is laid out roughly like this. Jackson's quarters, the granary, and the armory. The granary we can use for cover. You mean you're going to attack Fredonia? We're going to take Fredonia. A silent raid at daybreak. Sergeant Hagen, you take four men around the left flank and secure the armory. I'll take four men around the right and catch Jackson before he can organize resistance. There'll be no killing. That's an order. You're not going to take that town without killing. I know those men better than you do. Begging the Colonel's pardon. I think we're asking for a heap of trouble. You think we should call the whole thing off? Yes, sir. That's my opinion. I don't like the position we're in. And for what? A carpet-bagging civilian? who would be glad to see your hide nailed to the wall if he could muster it. This isn't for Glickston. Not anymore. Well, then who for? There are a hundred stubborn, bitter families in that settlement. Women, children, and men all awaiting a massacre. Now, I'd say that's worth the risk, wouldn't you? Sergeant, get your men ready. Yes, sir. May I ask you what provisions you've made to protect me and my men? Don't worry, Mr. Glickston. You won't be in any danger. You're staying here. After we've secured the town, I'll send a man back for you. Oh, you think I'm so busted heading for town and fast. Can I see you alone, Colonel? Speak up, Sergeant. We don't have any secrets from Mr. Glickston. Yes, sir. Rio so busted heading for Fedonia. And fast. Now, don't you see what's happening, Colonel? Buster's deserted. Jackson's gonna be waiting for you. He'll cut you to pieces. Sergeant, there'll be a slight alteration in plans. I'll take care of Jackson. You get the men into position. Take the armory, and every townsman you see, lock them up in the grain shed. Yes, sir. Remember, you wait here. Sergeant Hagen. Good luck. Good luck to you, sir. Keep low and not a sound.
men deployed throughout the town. Very good, Egan. Don't shoot, Colonel. It's me, Bustard. Take your position. Where have you been, Bustard? You were under orders. I'm sorry, Colonel, but I had to make sure we could do it. And it's a good thing I did, too. They're ready for a fight. They moved the women and the children into the root cellar. Jackson shifted the weapons into the grain shed and put men into the armory, just in case. I almost had you posted as a deserter, Corporal. Not me, Colonel. I know where I belong. You help Hagen scale the town. I'll get Jackson. Yes, sir. Or not, Mr. Jackson. We're going to help you. Right now, my troopers are taking prisoner every man in Fredonia. And you're coming along with me to make sure they cooperate. All right, Colonel. <laughs> Outside. Sergeant Hagen. Yes, sir. The women and children are to remain inside. Send a man back to pick up the wagon, Glickston and his men. Hurry. Yes, sir. Colonel? The grain shed is secured. The prisoners and the weapons are in there. Good. Break out the cannon, Corporal. Do I load it with solid shot or explosive, sir? You find some pico in the blacksmith shop. Wet it down and load a cannon with it. Pico, sir? But that won't stop anybody. Brave Dog's warriors won't know that. I don't want to kill any more than I have to. Just in case things get rough, load them with solid shot. Yes, sir. Rio! Let me ask you something, Colonel. If we were Yankee carpetbaggers instead of Johnny Rebs, would you still do the same thing? Exactly the same, Mr. Jackson. It isn't over, Colonel. That I promise you. The Crow let us live past this morning. We'll argue that point. Hold them on! Buster. Place those cannon over there by that new building. Barricade them with anything you can find. On the double. Yes, sir. Colonel, don't you think those cannon would be more effective out by the edge of town? The cannon won't do us any good at all until they crawl right down our throats. I want them aimed on the center of the street. Jackson, when they attack, I'm going to need all the firepower I can get. If you give me a word that your men won't cause us any trouble, I'll arm them. Colonel, here they come. About those guns, you just made yourself a deal. Fine. Open up. All right, you men. Mr. Jackson's given me his word you won't cause any trouble if we give you back your weapons. 
pick up Tagoras from his blue belly. Yes, you will, and that goes for all of us. Sergeant Hagen. Yes, sir. Break out the weapons. Yes, sir. You're not going to keep your word to that blue belly. I am. You follow orders and keep your mouth shut. The cannon primed and ready? Primed and ready, sir. Get the ignited and stand by. Hey, Jackson, place your men on both sides of the street. Draw the fire from here. Tell them not to shoot till they're sure of their targets. All right, boys, take both sides of the street. Don't fire till you're sure of your target. Come on, let's roll. Tell them to get on the southern side of the game. I'll blow a hole in him. Drop that rifle, Car Hugh. And that's an order. No more orders. Not from a Yankee lover like you. This is between him and me. You may have the others buffaloed, but not me. You ground my boys into the dust, and you're gonna pay, Custer. Get down in the dirt. I wanna see you crawl. If I could bring one of those boys back from the dead, yours or mine. I'd crawl from here to Denver. But that war's over now. Put that rifle away. I'm gonna shoot you. And I'm gonna watch you die. Slow. Carhew, come back! Carhew, come back! I don't think they'll bother you anymore. Carr, you uh, wasn't like that, Colonel. Not all the time. I, I just wanted you to know that. The war changed him. Changed us all. Tell me something, Colonel. You could have ridden off. 
And the Indians would have solved your problem for you. Why'd you stay? Any citizen of the United States is entitled to protection. And you're a citizen of this country, whether you like it or not. Yeah, I, I guess we are. Colonel Custer. Colonel Custer, I demand you inform these people that any act of aggression against the railroad will be severely punished. I think you'd better let the matter rest, Mr. Glickston. Now look, Colonel, you're still assigned to me and my railroad survey crew. And I insist on full protection from these land grabbers. There'll be no land grabbing around here. I intend to see that a deputy U.S. Marshal is assigned to Fredonia. Until such time that a city government can be formed to protect your rights and theirs. U.S. Marshal? Now look here, Colonel, is it? <laughs> like Mr. Glickston fell off his horse. Uh, that's the way it looks to me, Colonel. <sighs> Mount up, Sergeant. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Move him out. That sign taken down and another one put up. Not Free State. Redonia. Get some boys together and help that railroad crew get started. The sooner that railroad comes through here, the sooner we're going to grow. Mình vừa hướng dẫn mọi người tô xong một bức tranh của chú cá Cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi hết video hướng dẫn tô màu chú cá này của mình Và đừng quên ấn like video, subscribe kênh để ủng hộ cho mình có thể ra nhiều video hướng dẫn tô màu nữa nhé Xin chào